Mulweni. Welcome to this week's edition of Health for All. I'm your host, Bete. This week we take a look into the inspirational story of John Lama. This is a man who took tragedy and turned it into triumph. He took a mere fracture and turned it into a future. He took a simple colleague and made it into a career. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look into the story of Dr. John Lang. Collis fracture is the most common distal radial fracture. Most common in elderly, postmenopause, osteoporotic women. It may also happen in young adults. It is usually weak fall on the outstretched hand. It can be like this or like this. As there are many distal radial fractures, Collis fracture can be identified by five features on the X-ray. Number one, radial fracture, usually transverse at the metaphysis. Number two, extraarticular. Number three, dorsal displacement of the distal fragment of the radius. Number four, dorsal angulation of the distal fragment of the radius with the apex on the ventral side. Number five, proximal impaction. Doctor, doctor, my hand is painful. I just fell on it. And it looks like this. Let me see. Just like in any patient with a fracture, there are certain things that you need to look at or initial assessment that you need to do and management. So, for instance, you need to do your ABCs according to the ATLS just to ensure that your patient is stable. Once you've ensured that your patient is stable, you can move on further now to take a history from your patient to time, try and elicit the mechanism of injury. And once you've taken a history, then you want to move on to your examination. Um, so on examination, firstly you want to inspect, you want to inspect the arm, so what you might observe is a dinner fork deformity um, and also you might see some swelling as well as some redness. This component of the examination you want to delve into is the palpation and the critical component of the palpation is assessing the neurovascular status of um, the limb. So you firstly want to do that by palpating the pulse and be gentle at all time and observe the patient's face as this might be painful. Present pulse, you want to do a capillary refill time which must be less than two seconds. The next thing you want to do is to assess the, neuro, uh, the, 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 the sensory uh, status of the arm. So you do a quick sensory screen. Um, so the tip of, uh, so you want to do, I'm sorry, you want to do the web space of the finger for radial nerve. Uh, quickly the tip of uh, the, the the index finger just for median nerve and then you want to assess uh, ulnar nerve in this region. Uh, the next thing that you'd want to do is to do a quick motor screen but because our patient seems to be in a lot of pain I'm just going to demonstrate these movements. So you want to do extension to test for the radial nerve and you want to do a scissoring motion to quickly test for the median nerve and then you want to tell your patient to close their fist and clench their fist to assess for ulnar nerve function. Examination and initial assessment, we'd like to institute our initial management. Our initial management, as you can see, our gentleman is in pain. We'd like to give him some analgesia and then we'd like to take him for x-rays just to confirm indeed that it is a coli's fractures according to the five criteria that we listed earlier. The reduction, firstly, before you perform the reduction, it would be advisable for you to anesthetize the fracture site as the reduction itself may be painful. Uh, so now that you've done that, it would also be advisable for you to have an assistant to help you with the traction maneuver. But in this instance, if you don't have an, an, an assistant, you can ask the patient to place the arm there. Then what you want to do is you want to apply traction like that. You want to apply traction like that so that you can bring back the dorsally angulated portion of the radius forward and then once you've done that to put it into place you in once you're still maintaining a bit of traction you're going to apply some extension so that you can put it back into place 
and once it's back into place to maintain the reduction then you'll bring it into flexion and into armor deviation for the presentation of the reduction these are the maneuvers that occur so firstly it's the traction and then you want to extend to worsen the fracture and then there's flexion and then after that there's armor deviation the first step of pop application includes applying the soft band and we've already mentioned earlier that the reason why you apply it is just for protection of the skin like that so ensuring that when you roll it you allow the movement to store of the metacarpophalangeal joints further ensuring that the the parts of the soft band there's a 50 percent overlap between the parts of the soft band after the application of the soft band now we're going to apply the actual plaster of paris um, so initially you always have to put in your gloves so then we're going to immerse this plaster of paris into water um, like that down and down again and then we need to ensure that we remove all the bubbles from the plaster in order to maintain its integrity with regards to the application of the plaster of paris um, we're going to apply this plaster all the way um, up to just below the elbow but just to explain one important principle in adults it's usually applied below the elbow because of certain complications that they may have like joint stiffness but if you're dealing with younger people you want to apply it all the way above the elbow it's important to notice that now after you've put your pop on or during the application you leave a cuff of soft band here and you leave a cuff of soft band here as well ensure the completion of the reduction then we need to apply three point molding in the area of the fracture so three pressure points one distal to it one proximal to it and one just above it okay thank you Tota. then what happens now okay so what's going to happen now is that we're going to have to do an x-ray to ensure that the bones are in place and then if we see that the bones are in place then we're going to discharge you're going to go home but within the next 24 hours should you start experiencing any of these symptoms like pain pain that increases in nature um, should you start to experience any swelling in this region uh, should you start to notice any color changes in your finger any numbness and any funny feelings of your fingers like pins and needles then you need to return immediately the next time again we're gonna if any of that doesn't happen you don't have to return immediately and then we're going to see you again in a week's time to ensure to do another x-ray to ensure that the bones are still in place and we also want to check if the plaster still fits you well if all of that is proper and uh, then we're going to see you again in six weeks for the removal of the actual plaster six weeks after the removal of the plaster of Paris you can do wrist exercises just to promote the effectiveness of the hand you can do the Queen's wave and the extension of your hand